This was recorded on a naked GoPro Hero 6 on a Beta 95X V2. It's a tiny sub 250 gram FPV drone with a DJI digital feed. It's really tiny, so you can fly indoors through really tight spaces, and it's got prop guards making it safe to fly near most subjects. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build it. You can buy it ready to fly, but there are some advantages to building it yourself. Most notably, you can use a full-size DJI camera, mount the flight controller so the USB points downward, and get better antenna placement. You do need some custom 3D printed parts, but otherwise everything else is stock. In addition to the 95X plastic frame and components, you'll need the V2 upgrade kit. It includes a carbon fiber top plate with holes to mount the Cadex Vista air unit, a dampened mount for either a naked GoPro or an Insta360 Go. You also get this bottom plate, which is actually a repurposed top plate for the 95X V1. I don't like leaving the flight controller exposed with this big hole. So I printed a bottom plate I found on Thingiverse, which fills all the gaps under the frame and accommodates the USB port. Now we won't be using any of these pieces because they're for the Beta FPV antennas and the smaller Cadex Nebula camera. Instead, I printed a new mount for the DJI camera. I also printed this mount for the Cadex Vista antenna and the TBS Crossfire Immortal T. This particular print does a great job of separating the two and sets the Vista antenna a little higher to clear the battery. Also included are the Insta360 Go and Naked Go Pro mounts. So this build involves very little soldering, so let's get that out of the way first. If you're using the DJI remote, you'll want to solder the S-Bus wire here as well, but since I'm using Crossfire, I only need the four wires. And to mount the Vista, we'll need to remove these four corner screws. These unlabeled pads on the corner of the flight controller provide power directly from the battery. Use those as well as the TX1 and RX1 pads for the MSP data connection. If you're using the DJI remote, then you'll need to solder the S-Bus wire to the RX3 wire, which is part of the RX plug that comes with the flight controller. Now the flight controller mounts to the bottom of the frame, so you'll need to send it through the middle to keep the wires in the right place. Add the little dampeners to the corners, but don't screw it down quite yet. I've got the TBS Crossfire Nano receiver, which plugs into the board here, and then it needs to go through to the top. Gently seat the board onto the plastic pegs and flip the frame back over to mount the 4-in-1 ESC board. It mounts with the motor plugs pointed up, and the plug to the flight controller needs to go through this gap. Screw the ESC board in place using these washer head screws, and then turn it back over to plug it into the flight controller. It's a bit of a stretch, so you gotta kinda bend the wires to get it to reach. You should have just enough length to plug it in though. Now this is optional, and I actually had to come back to do this, but you can attach this plug for a naked GoPro. I recommend removing the yellow wire and soldering only the bat and ground wires. You'll have to piggyback them onto the same pads powering the Cadex Vista though. As an alternative, you can make a connector to power your Naked GoPro through the balance lead of your battery. Here I used an adjustable BEC where I set the output voltage to 9 volts. I also added a 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor to protect against voltage spikes. While it's not ideal to use back-to-back -back BECs, I just want to be extra careful not to damage my GoPro. Also, you can use this to power your Naked GoPro on any quad without soldering any additional wires. Secure the flight controller with some more washer screws, and now we can move on to mounting the Cadex Vista. Screw the antenna holder to the frame first using the longer M1.6 screws included in the Beta 95X V2 upgrade kit. Screw them into the Vista, making sure the camera cable is pointed forward. Now we can attach the antenna by removing this corner screw and bracket at the bottom of the unit. Put the antenna into the TPU holder and carefully plug it into the Vista Air unit. This can be a little finicky, but uh, just make sure the bracket is seated on the little metal pin before you screw it back in. Now we're about ready to button this thing up. Pass the battery lead through the top plate, and let's prepare the receiver. I like to use my own shrink tube here, so I can slide it on and off as needed, but you can use the clear shrink tube that comes with the receiver. Feed the antenna wire through the TPU mount and around the Vista unit to plug it into the receiver. Now we can mount the camera. Use these smaller M2 screws on the sides and the longer pointy screws to secure the TPU mount to the frame. Make sure the groove is pointed upward to accommodate the camera cable. Let's bind our receiver. Plug in a battery, and what's nice about Crossfire is you can still press the bind button up to a minute after you power up. No need to grow a third arm to hold the bind button while you plug in the battery. Let your radio do its thing, and then we can finish this up. Be careful not to pinch the receiver and route the antenna wire inside the standoff before you screw the top plate into place. 
Now, we don't want any loose wires, so use your tweezers to get a snug fit around the air unit. Then use some electrical or cloth tape to secure them to the unit so they don't get chopped up by the props. Next, let's mount the motors. This is pretty straightforward. As always, it's a good idea to use some blue Loctite, but for a quad this small, it's not crucial. Feed the motor wires through the frame and use your tweezers to plug them all in. Hopefully you've got access to a 3D printer because the included bottom plate is woefully insufficient. Not only will it cover the USB port, but it'll leave your flight controller exposed to the elements. This one is perfect and should work using either PLA or TPU filament. Now I've got this configured for the props out orientation. So the front left motor is counterclockwise. I believe that's how the RTF model comes from beta FPV as well. Make sure you mount the props to the motors as if the motors are upright so the bottom of each prop should still be pointing down. You might also want a TPU lens protector. There are several on Thingiverse to print yourself, but I'll also leave a link for one to purchase. Stick your battery pad on and let's mount the GoPro platform. The kit comes with a naked GoPro holder, but it's a little low and makes contact with the DJI camera. I printed an alternative which raises it up a little bit and puts the camera at a slightly higher angle. This is by the same person who designed the antenna mount. Screw the mount to the bracket, and while I already put the dampeners on the frame, I'll show you a trick to get them on the rest of the way. You can use some string, or in my case some dental floss, to wrap around the head of each one. Feed both ends of the string through the hole, and use a circular motion to pull it through. It's a huge headache to put these on any other way, so I'm glad I found this trick. Now you just need to put a little tension on the mount, otherwise it'll be too wobbly. Use this nylon screw and nut to compress the front dampener. Just compress the dampener a little and you should be able to freely screw it on with your fingers. The amount of tension I've got here gets a great result in my footage, so try to match what I've done here. Slide the battery strap between the top frame and your receiver. Doing it this way, you'll have to mount your battery perpendicular to the frame. I chose to do it this way because otherwise it requires removing the top plate to replace a broken battery strap. So I printed this updated camera mount that uses Umagrip to dampen the vibrations and reduce jello in the FPV feed. You'll need to cut small strips which function as grips around the camera. You can't really screw through this stuff so you might want to use a drill. It's not too pretty but I'll show you a before and after video. I flew the same spot on two different days with very similar conditions and you can see quite an improvement. The jello is virtually gone but you can still see a little turbulence simply due to how lightweight this quad is. I'd say it's worth the upgrade over the STL provided by Beta FPV. Look for the link to all the 3D printed parts in the description and a big shout out to the Maker Boys for all the work they put into designing these components. Finally, you'll need to raise the motors off the ground. The screws will rub if you don't put anything down there. So I used a spare landing skid, but you can get creative and use whatever you've got lying around. To avoid covering the USB, I had to center it, but after mounting the GoPro and battery, it doesn't rock back and forth. My favorite battery is this 4S 550mAh GMB, and I like to use an external BEC to power the naked GoPro through the balance lead. So I strap it to the battery like this, making sure everything is nice and convenient to plug in. Make sure the battery doesn't make contact with the GoPro mount as it'll send vibrations to the camera. The dry weight with the GoPro is 152 grams and the all up weight with the battery is 229 grams. This footage is from my naked GoPro Hero 6 stabilized with Real Steady Go. On a 4S 550mAh LiPo I get about 3.5 minutes of flight, but a 650mAh pack should get closer to 4 minutes. Anything larger, like an 850mAh pack, uh, will fly pretty heavy and the included battery strap is a little too short. I think 550 to 650 is perfect. I also tried a 3S 850 milliampere pack and got four minutes, but it needed a fair bit of tuning, so I think 4S is the way to go. Anyway, I love that this thing is so small. It has the DJI digital feed and the footage is just so smooth. It flies really well and it's perfect for indoor and proximity flight. I strongly recommend building it rather than buying the bind and fly model though. This way you get a better quality video feed and a bunch of design improvements like the dampened camera mount, a more accessible USB port, and better antenna placement. It's a fairly easy build so it's well worth the extra effort. If you want to learn how to configure this on your computer, follow the link in the description to the build guide on rotorbuilds.com. 
Basically, I'm running the RPM filter on 8 kHz gyro and PID frequencies with the ESC PWM frequency at 48 kHz. These settings really make for a smooth flight, and I'm running the stock PIDs provided by Beta FPV, and they seem just fine. If you want to get into cinematic FPV, this is a great place to start. It requires a fair investment though, because you need the DJI goggles and a radio. I prefer the TBS Tango 2 over the DJI Remote for the form factor, but that means you need to buy a TBS Nano receiver. You also need to find a GoPro to tear down and a copy of Real Steady Go. The Hero 6 is getting harder to find, but the Hero 8 is a great alternative, and I'm sure we'll see more naked cases available soon. You can use an Insta360 Go, but the video quality just doesn't hold a candle to GoPro. This does require a number of 3D prints, so it's nice to have a TPU-capable printer, but most of these parts can be purchased online. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my website, rotorbuilds.com, for thousands of FPV builds and part lists, and please subscribe for more FPV-related content. Thank you. Bye.